All right, let's have a look at the probability test. So, first up, the first question, we have a fair coin that is flipped once. And we're asked, what is the probability of getting ahead? Okay, so in probability, let me actually just do this at the top here. So the probability, oops, sorry. So the probability of some event happening, let's just call it E, is equal to the favorable outcomes. So that means the things we're looking for to happen divided by all possible outcomes everything that can happen okay so let's apply that over here so fair coin is flipped once what is the probability of getting ahead okay so if we flip a coin how many how many heads are there <coughs> how many heads are there on a coin so there is one head on a coin and how many total sides are there on a coin two right so one out of the two possible things that can happen is a head so that's one over two you could also just write down all the possible outcomes you can say you can get a head or you can get a tail so it's one out of the two okay so that is one out of two and that is worth one mark next up we have a fair six-sided die is rolled once what is the probability of getting a five again so the probability of getting a five is equal to how many fives are there one five and we're told it's a six-sided die, so there are six possible sides. So it's one out of the six numbers will be a five. So one out of six. Okay, next up, what is the probability of getting a prime number on this fair six-sided die? So the probability of getting a prime number. So first we have to count the prime numbers. So let's write down all the numbers on this die. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So which of these numbers are all prime numbers? Well, we've got this one. Two is a prime number. Three is a prime number. And five is a prime number. One is an interesting case. It's not a prime, but it's not composite either. So one is sort of the, the one to look out for. One does not count as a prime number, but two, three, and five are prime numbers. So we've got three prime numbers. One, two, three out of six possible numbers. So three prime numbers out of all the six numbers. And then we have to remember to simplify the fraction if it can. So 3 out of 6, we can simplify that by dividing the top and the bottom by 3 both. So we can get 1 out of 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And now this cannot simplify any further. So that's 1, 2 marks. 1 mark for counting the number of primes correctly and the total number of outcomes. And then another mark for simplifying correctly. Good. Next question. What's the probability of getting a number less than 6? So probability of getting a number less than 6. Okay, how many numbers are less than 6? We've got 1 is less than 6, 2 is less than 6, 3 is less than 6, 4 is less than 6, 5 is less than 6. But 6 is not less than 6, right? 6 is 6. It's not less than 6. It's equal to 6. So 5 of the numbers are less than 6. 5 numbers less than 6 out of a total of 6 numbers. And that is our mark there. We can't simplify this any further. Okay, last question for the fair six-sided die. What is the probability of getting a number that's greater than six? Okay, how many of these numbers are bigger than six? None of them, right? There's no numbers bigger than six. The biggest one is six, but six is not bigger than six. So we've got zero numbers bigger than six out of a possible of six numbers. And then zero divided by six is zero. Okay. So that's a mark there. This could actually count for two marks, zero divided by six and simplify it to zero, but it was just one mark today. All right, let's move on to the next question. Question two. Here we're told that there's a bag that contains five red marbles, six blue, yet nine yellow, and ten white. So let's just write that down over here somewhere where we can see. So we've got red, blue, white, yellow, and white. So five of these, six of these, nine of those, and ten of those. Okay. Now what is the probability if we, so if we, one marble is drawn r at random from the bag. What is the probability that the marble we drew randomly is a blue marble? So probability of blue, we count how many blues do we have? Six. How many total marbles do we have? Well, five plus six is eleven. 11 plus 9 is 20, and 20 plus 10 is 30. So that's 6 out of 30, and then we have to remember to simplify. Both of these numbers can be divided by 6, 
So we get one out of five by dividing both of them by six. So again, one mark for the first step and one mark for this simplification. The probability of getting a white marble. Again, we count how many white marbles are there. It's 10 white marbles out of a total of 30 marbles. And again, we simplify. Both of these can be divided by 10. So we get one out of three. Again, that's two marks, 10 out of 30. And then for this simplification. Now, red or blue. So the probability that the marble we pick is red or blue. So that means it can be either one of the reds or the blues. So how many of the marbles are either red or blue? Well, these 11, right? If you pick any of these 11 marbles, then you're picking a red or a blue one. So it's going to be the 5 plus 6. So that's 11 out of the 30 marbles are red or blue. And this cannot simplify any further. So that's our only mark here. Next up, we have the probability that it's not yellow. Not yellow. Okay, so how many of these are not yellow? Well, it's all the ones except for the yellow ones, right? So we can do it in different ways. We can say it's all 30 minus the 9, which will give us 21. Or we can say it's just all the others added together. So 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 plus 10 is 21. So 21 marbles are not yellow out of a total of 30 marbles. And again, we can simplify that further by dividing both of them by 7. Uh, by 3, sorry. Dividing both of them by 3, and we get 7 out of 10. Again, those are two marks. One for getting the correct number of non-yellow marbles, and another one for simplifying the fraction correctly. Next up, what is the probability when you select one marble from the bag that the marble is going to be white and yellow? Now over here, I saw there were quite a few mistakes here. I think a lot of you answered this as if the question was white or yellow. But white and yellow, think about this. Think about picking one marble from this bag. Now, if you have that marble in your hand, what is the probability that that marble is white and yellow? It's impossible, right? All the marbles are, are one color. The marble is either red or blue or yellow or white. There's no marble that is white and yellow. So we've got zero of the marbles are white and yellow out of a total of 30 marbles. And again, zero divided by 30 is zero. Okay. Now, what is the probability that we get a not purple marble? not purple so how many of these marbles are not purple all of them right all of them are not purple so all 30 of the marbles are not purple out of a total of 30 marbles and we simplify that to 30 divided by 30 which is one so again two marks one for getting the correct number and then for simplifying okay moving on okay we've got one more in this section the probability of getting an orange marble so how many of these marbles are orange? Zero. None of them. No marbles are orange. So we've got no orange marbles divided by a total of 30 marbles. And zero divided by 30 is zero. So again, that is, in this case, this one is two. So that's for this, getting the number of marbles correct and then simplify. Good. Moving on to question three. So given the following numbers. 2, 3, 5, 9, 12, 15, 16, 20, 25, and 27. So from these numbers, one number is chosen at random. Find the probability that the chosen number is not prime. Okay. Probability that it's not prime. Okay, so how do we find the probability that it's not prime? Well, we can find, the, find how many of the numbers are not prime numbers. I guess we've already seen a couple of numbers here we know that 1 4 and 6 are not prime we know 2 3 and 5 are prime right okay so 2 3 and 5 these are prime numbers we've already seen that in question 1 now the rest let's see are there any other prime numbers 9 can be divided by 3 12 can be divided by 2 15 can be divided by 3 14 uh, 16 divided by 2 20 can be divided by 2 25 divided by 5 27 can be divided by 3 so none of the rest are prime so there are only three prime numbers. And how many other numbers are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so seven of those numbers are not prime. So seven out of the ten numbers that we have here are not prime. That can't simplify any further, so that's our mark. Now the probability that it can be divided by three. So how many of these numbers can be divided by three? Three can be divided by three. Let me make a little note here. So that one, 
can be divided by 3, 9 can be divided by 3, 12 can be divided by 3, 15 can be divided by 3, and 27 can be divided by 3. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. So 5 of those numbers can be divided by 3 out of a total of the 10 numbers. And then remember to simplify that. And that is one mark for counting correctly the number of numbers divisible by 3. And then for simplifying. Okay, next question. The probability that we have a number that is greater than 20. Yeah, how many numbers here are bigger than 20? 25 and 27 are definitely bigger. What about 20? No, 20 is equal to 20, not bigger than. So only these two numbers, 20 and 27. So only two of the 10 numbers are bigger than 20. And remember to simplify, we can divide both of these numbers by 2. So we get 1 out of 5. And again, two marks for getting the correct count and therefore simplifying. Now the probability of a square number. What is a square number? So a square number is the answer to any integer squared. So if you have something like negative 3 squared, what does that give you? It gives you 9. So 9 is a square number. The answer to any whole number, positive or negative, so any integer squared, gives you a square number. Okay, so 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. So those are basically the only ones we have to look out for here. Because this only goes up to 27, so we can even ignore that one. So those are all the square numbers that might fit in here. So how many of those are there? Well, 1 is not here. 4 is not here. 9, yes, that's a square number. Uh, what else? 60, yes, 16 is also here. That's a square number. And 25, that's also here. That's also a square number. So 3 out of the 10 numbers are square numbers. And again, 3 over 10, we cannot simplify that any further. So that's our only mark there. Okay. And last one for question three. Probability that it's a factor of 36. So what is a factor? Well, a factor is a number that can divide into another number. So if we're asking what are the factors, factors of 6. Okay, so which are all the numbers that 6 can be divided by? 6 divided by 1 can work, right? Because that gives you a nice number. 6 divided by 2 can also work. 6 divided by 3 also gives you an answer. 6 divided by 4, what does that give us? That gives us 1.5. That's a decimal. So 6 is not divisible by 4, right? Because we need to get a whole number answer for 4 to be a factor. So 4 is not a factor of 6. 6 divided by 5, that also that gives us 1.2. So that also does not work. And 6 divided by 6, that gives us one yes, so that works. So these are the factors of 6. But we were asked for the factors of 36. So let's quickly have a look at those. So let's list all the factors of 36. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. 36 divided by 5 does not work. Uh, 36 divided by 6 does work. And then... So this is basically the middle number, because 6 times 6 is 36. So now we can just look. 4 times 9 is 36. 3 times 12 is 36. 2 times 18 is 36. And 1 times 36 is 36. So those are all our factors of 36. Okay, so let's see which of these are in this list. 1 is not in there. 2 is in there, yes. Uh, 3 is also in there. 4 is not. 6 is not. 9 is in there. 12 is in there, and 18 and 36 are not, so it's 4. 4 out of the 10 numbers are the factors of 36, and then remember to simplify, and then we get 2 over 5. Okay, so again, one mark for counting the factors correctly, and another mark for simplification. Good, last two questions for the test here. We're told that a fair die is rolled 72 times. Okay, so you're rolling a dice or a die 72 times. How many even numbers do you expect to get? Okay, so remember if we want to do this, we want to find what is the probability if we roll it once. So what is the probability of getting an even number on one roll, on one dice, right? If we roll it just once. How many even numbers on the dice? So again, this is a six-sided die. Everyone at least understood that from the test. It's six-sided, six-sided die. 
Okay, so we've got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So which of these numbers are even? 2 is even, 4 is even, and 6 is even. Right, so an even number on one roll is 3 out of 6, which we can simplify to 1 out of 2. Okay, so what we do now is we take the probability of an even, of an even number and we multiply it by how many times we roll the dice. Right, so we expect, if we roll the dice once, we expect to get half of an even number basically. Right, this is what you can think of in the abstract. We expect half of all the rolls to be even numbers. Right, half of all the rolls. So if we roll, if we roll it 72 times, we're going to say that's going to be a half times 72, which gives us 36. So we expect 36 even numbers if we roll the dice 72 times. Okay, so for 36 we get a mark, and if I can see your reasoning for the test. So this half times 72, that would be my ideal way to write the answer. But if I can follow your logic and see how you got to 36, that's going to be completely fine. Okay. Then for the last question, how many threes do we expect? Same thing. So what's the probability of rolling a three if we just rolled once? Right. The probability is one out of six. There's one three on, the, on a dice and there's six sides on a dice. So one out of six. So then we're going to say that's one sixth of all the number of rolls. So one sixth times 72 rolls will give us 12. So we're going to have 12, we're going to expect to get 12 threes if we roll the dice 72 times. And those are the two marks. Okay, I hope this video memo was useful.